Hello everybody, you're listening to The Archer on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound, I'm your host Dane Cobain. This is the weekly radio show where we chat about the local arts news, we have a different guest on each week, we head over to the Rylight Zone for a short story and or some fiction, and we catch up with Twanglin' Jack Ford over in the Oak Shed for a weekly album review. As always you can find us on Facebook, if you search for The Art Show on Wickham Sound you should be able to find us, and we are repeated on Wickham Sound on Monday nights, we're on the Wickham Sound Listen Again, iTunes, Spotify, and wherever else you get your podcasts, please do leave us a short review on your podcast platform of choice, it all helps. You can also find us on Facebook if you search for The Art Show on Wickham Sound, you should be able to find us. So this week we have our second uh, catch-up show, we are going to be chatting to Nick Ware from Straight 8 and singer-songwriter Colin Upfield. They're both also in a band together called The Scardinals, and so we're going to catch up with them again to talk uh, The Scardinals in a future episode. But before we do that, we're going to head over to the Rylight Zone, and this is the latest instalment of a short story by myself. Dane Cobain uh, and this is The Haunting of Daphne Degemensi. The Possession of Daphne Degemensi. I first met Daphne Degemensi at Sefakoy Lise in Istanbul. It was our first day of high school and I didn't know anyone. I was a shy child and I usually kept to myself but my parents had told me how important it was to make new friends. We were all wearing uniforms of course, but Daphne made hers look like haute couture with a stunning gemstone hung around her neck on a leather string. She stood out from the crowd as though she was the only other person in the world. The playground seemed to shrink around us until there was only the two of us. I made my way over to her and said hello and she reached out and took my hand. Hi, she said with a voice like an angel. I'm Daphne, what's your name? Zainab, I replied. I love your necklace. It's a garnet, Daphne said. My birthstone. I was born in January, see? January 18th. My birthday is the 20th, I said. I tell you what, I'll invite you to my birthday party if you invite me to yours. That sounds fair, Daphne replied. Something tells me we're going to be friends. That was The Haunting of Daphne Degamancy by myself, Dan Cobain. You're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. And this is Betty Accorsi with Blue Wave. Step reached the brand new water. What 
That was in Blue Wave by Betty Acorsi. You're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Anne Cobain. And it's time for us to catch up now to see what is new with Nick Ware from Straight 8. I mean, the, the place to begin with, really, is to just ask, <coughs> what have you been up to since last time we chatted? Uh, me or as a band? Because there's a bit of both, Well, really. both. A bit of both, yeah. So, a- as a band, um, Straight 8 opened for the Christians and uh, Van Morrison at pub in the park on last thursday which was uh great fun um we only had a half hour set and um most of the audience hadn't come in by that point because they'd only just opened the gates but um it was great a great experience to do the guys worked really hard to do it we got our set down to to bang on 30 minutes um some banging songs um and that went really well um so very pleased about that and we got to meet min- mingle with the great and the good so there was uh you know, people like Tom Kerry's there, obviously. Um, uh, what's the other guys out there? So uh, James May was there, Rick Stein, Mary Berry, um, the Christians, obviously. Uh, Steve Redgrave, local local yeah. guy. Um, Shaking Stevens, um, who nice. came backstage. And actually, he's our trumpet player, Dick, has played with Shaking Stevens before, so they were catching up. Yeah. Uh, so he's played with him for, for, for many years. So, yeah, that was that was really good. Um so we had a couple of guests players in the band um, this time round. We had um, uh, our drummer was uh, unable to make it, so our percussionist um, came in and, and did the drums as he does sometimes. And we got another another guy in on percussion uh, as well. Um, so that was good. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a good good fun thing to do. We were very concerned about the uh, what would happen to us when we got there, you know, because it was. Things were quite vague initially, um, right. but when we got there, you know, the, the actual organisation on the ground was was second to none, so we got very well looked after. And, uh, yeah, that was so that was that with, um, with Straight 8. Um, we did some gigs end of last year for Warner, uh, Warner Leisure, um, mm-hmm. one in Lowestoft and one down in Hayling Island that seemed to go down well. Um, bit of a long way going to Lowestoft, though, to be fair. Uh, that was quite a long, a long evening um other stuff we've done well um rather sadly our our um uh a guy who rode for us for many years um died rather suddenly at the beginning of the year and we were asked to do his celebration of life um which was nice um really really honored to do that uh, but unfortunately um lee our singer had to dash off just before we were due on stage as his mum had been taken ill um yeah. So our um, uh, female singer, Vicky, uh, took over. And as, as Charles would have it, our original singer, the original straight eight singer back from the 1990s, uh, Andrew Brown, uh, was actually at the party. So he came into some numbers as well, um, which was a bit of a shock for him and a bit of a shock for us, but uh, he still got it. So that was, that was great fun. Uh, so Brilliant. that's what we did with straight eight. We've got, um, we're playing Chinna Bike Days, um, beginning of july uh i think then we're doing a gig at um born in community center in nice. october and then i think we're doing heads of social club in november which is kind of a regular one that we do um so that's the straight eight thing um me personally um although running straight eight is is great fun uh, and i enjoy enjoy the playing very much not so much the herding cats that happens yeah. with, a, with a band of that size um i was actually approached to play in a in a ska band yeah and uh, i went along and auditioned for them thoroughly enjoyed it and i've done loads of gigs with them now and it, actually i think you're talking to uh uh colin, colin yeah upfield yeah so uh, yeah I, I joined them so colin Colin's been on the uh, Colin's been on the show before, kind of as a as solo singer songwriter. So what I'm hoping to do, uh, I'll hopefully catch up with him the same way I'm catching up with you to see what's new with him, and then maybe some point down the line we can get the two of you on to to come talk uh, Scardinals as well. Oh, that'd be great. I mean, you know, the the, the Scardinals guys are great. I mean, they're a great bunch of musicians, um, and it's just good fun music. Um, you know, we we I haven't played pubs for a long time um straight it's a bit big to fit in a pub uh, yeah yeah but, but um yeah we seem to fit in some quite small spaces the Scardinals, <laughs> uh, and we've got 
just loads of loads of gigs this year. I think we've got twenty. We've we've done we've got twenty six in total so far. I think we've done about six already. Um, yeah. So it's just phenomenal. Um, but so it's stuff that everybody loves to dance to. We we played. We I mean the guys are based mainly out of Oxford. Um, so uh, Colin and I are the, kind of the outsiders from from Wickham. Yeah. Um, so most of the gigs seem to be over there, but we've done a few over here. We did the Bellevue, uh, we're doing the Dashwood Roadhouse, we did the Mad Squirrel, uh, we're playing the Bellevue again, uh, we're playing the Bell at Risborough. Um, yeah, it's just just good good fun stuff. Yeah. I mean, how do you balance out, you know, your time between the two of them plus everything else with work and life and, and whatnot? Uh, well, except for answers, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um no, I mean the. I mean, straight eight. We don't do as many gigs now, um, yeah. and as always, it's it's with a band of that size. I mean, and the, the band of of the caliber they are, the guys are doing other stuff as well. So a lot of them play in other bands and so forth. So that becomes difficult sometimes. Is actually getting rehearsals together and and, and getting gigs together, and the type of gigs we've been going for in the last couple of years tend to be more festival type things. Yeah. And we're still doing local gigs as well, but uh, you know the, the, we we like doing the festivals. They're they're always good fun. No one's out for a bad time. They paid for a ticket, right? Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a slightly different you know approach to it. Uh, with the Scardinals, I mean, I'm just a player. Um, yeah, so you don't I have to, to worry as much. I don't have to worry much. I don't have to cart the gear around. Only my my saxophone. I'm only playing in the straight. I, I play two saxophones, baritone and alto. Scardinals, yeah. I'm just playing the tenor, so I've just got one one saxophone uh, and rock up and play. Um, I mean, the guys are great. I mean, we've got Martin Holloway, uh, ex of the Inflatables, who's just absolutely solid on on guitar, and we have a good a good time. Uh, and and Kevin and um, and uh, Neil, uh, the other the other two guys other than Colin, um, are also bang on the money as well. So I really enjoy doing the gigs because it's just it's just fun stuff. Everybody's singing and dancing. Um, and uh, yeah, that's just what happens, really. Awesome. And do you have plans with our, either of the groups to go into the studio anytime soon? Um, not with Straight Eight. Um, we haven't planned to do anything. Um, we're not really a studio band. We're a live band. Mm -hmm. And we've done, well, two albums, two and a half albums over the years, maybe three. I mean, we've yeah. there's lots of live recordings of us around, uh, and curious enough, our current demo CD is uh, Lee, who's our present uh, male lead singer, is actually singing with Straight Eight of 1990 because we mm -hmm. um, just repurposed the tapes uh, yeah. and managed to put his vocal over the top uh, yeah. on the tape. So that's quite an interesting thing. That was quite fun to to play around with, trying to get that that right uh but yeah it's, it's more about live live stuff with straight eight yeah cool would you ever do a live album um we have done um i we didn't kind of release it as a as a general thing um and there's lots of live recordings i've got what's it called yeah, we did a live recording of our 10th anniversary performance, which is 25 years ago. Uh, and then we've got a selection of other stuff that was taken from various live gigs, uh, which one of the guys put together under the title of When They Had Hair, which is also a <laughs> cool. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it's not – It's we're going out to perform. That's really what, what we're about. Um, yeah. You know, selling CDs at gigs is not – you know, it's not it doesn't make a lot of money and there's a lot of expense to 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 produce them in the first place. Um I mean there's streaming, but we're a live band. It's a performance yeah. performance thing. And as, especially for the kind of shows you play as well, you know, when maybe if you're in a pub or something you might sell a couple of CDs, but at a festival everyone's already paid to get in. They're paying through the nose for drinks and stuff usually as well. And there's a ton of other bands they're gonna go and see. So it's, I suppose it's not the easiest thing to try and sort of flog a bit of merchandise at the end of your set, especially, as you say, when everyone just, just wants to be having yeah, fun I mean, and dancing. It, I mean, it, people do ask, and uh, and that's really nice, but that's not 
not what we're there for. We we like to mm -hmm. perform. You know? I mean, we've we we got the bright coloured suits on, um, which immediately makes people smile. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's part of the reason why we wear them. It, it's it's you know you, you you want people to enjoy themselves. So we, we tend to play stuff people can dance to, stuff they're familiar with, and and say at a pub in the park, we probably didn't play our play our favourite songs, but we played a selection that people would know and get up mm -hmm. to, uh, and I think that worked quite well. Yeah, cool. So let's say um, just sort to end on really, let's assume we're catching up again in eighteen months or two years or however long it's been. Um, what do you hope to have achieved sort of over those those next two years? Um, there's a couple of festivals that I'd really like to get into, um, and a couple I'd like to do again. I mean, uh, I'm hoping that, you know, our performance at Pub in the Park and the people that, you know, that run that festival and, and run the bands for that festival will consider us for other ones. I mean, it's, yeah, we probably wouldn't do that one next year because they don't put the same stuff on twice, but, mm -hmm. you know, I think we are very professional in our outlook and we try to be a safe, safe pair of hands. We turn up when we're supposed to, we do the stuff we're supposed to, et cetera. Um, a couple of other festivals I'd, I'd like to get into this um, Twinwood Festival, um, which is in Bedford. Um, I've gone to it for years, uh, you know, as a, as a punter. Um, mm -hmm. And they're branching out and doing more and more stuff. Um, so I have approached them. Um, though it is, like a lot of these festivals, it's difficult to get into. We have found in the last year or so or two years that whereas festivals were crying out for bands, now it's, mm. it's the other way around uh, and you're fighting for a, a position. Um, so um, it's not always easy. Uh, we'd love to get back to retro again. Um, we were fortunate to do that four years on the trot. Uh, so they've rested us this last two years. I hope we can get that one back again. That's always good fun. We play in the, the Ricky Tick tent, so it's all the Northern Soul nice. uh, stuff there. And we've generally closed off on the Sunday night, um, which has been great fun. And there's a load of guys that come up from the, um, I think it's Devizes Scooter Club, that we always see there that, that, that always support the band, which is which is great. Um, yeah, and it's just the thing with festivals is finding them uh, when they're booking. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know, you've got to. Uh, it's probably the end of this year, end of the summer. You really start to to, to have to to lobby them to to get to get in um, because they they they, they book they book up that quickly, you know. Yeah. Uh, and it's just catching them at just the right point. But I, I hope we can get more festivals with um, uh, with Straight Eight because you know we go down well. It's great fun with the Scardinals. I mean, we just you know we we're already booking into twenty twenty five. And I'm sure Colin will will tell you. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, even when Straight Eight was first started, I mean, we would do, I suppose, twenty five thirty gigs a year. Yeah, but yeah, we never got them booked up by April. <laughs> you know, yeah, um, we we it would we'd probably have a fair few in the bag, and then more would come in. But with the scar nails, it just seems to be we're on a on a crest of the whole scar thing at the moment. It seems to be making a comeback. Uh, yeah, and that that's good to see. It's great. You're listening to the Archer on one hundred six point six FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain. That was us catching up with Nick Ware from Straight Eight, and this is a different Nick. This is Nick Coleman with Python.
That was Python by Nick Coleman. You're listening to the Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain. And it's time for us now to uh, join uh, previous guest, Colin Upfield, a singer-songwriter, for a little catch-up. Obviously, the main question is, what have you been up to since last time we spoke? And I appreciate... I can't remember how long it's been. It's probably been a cu- couple of years since you've been on the show. Oh, 2020, wow. it was. Jeez. I, I think we were still in lockdown probably the last yeah, time. Yeah, we probably were, yeah. We spoke just about. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's been a busy few years. Um, so basically, my main sort of things in the last couple of years is sort of still been doing the open mics and that various stuff. Uh, but I think I just hit fifty sort of when we spoke last time, and so yeah. So basically, instead of grabbing a ponytail or buying a motorbike, I went w- w- went and became a lead singer of Scar Band. And that's been my sort of taking up a lot of my time musically, obviously, in the last few years, well, it's a couple of years at least. So I was doing I, I was doing the rock project stuff, which I think we spoke about last time, and that kind of faded away a little bit. But I really enjoyed that singing in a band element of that rock project stuff as opposed to the solo stuff. Yeah. So I um stuck a name, sort of stuck my name in one sort of in a classified ad. And a guy contacted me out of blue, he said, I think you sound great in a scar band, you want to come and have a rehearse? And sort of the rest is history, really. So obviously we well with rehearsals for that and gigging for that. My solo sort of thing has been a lot less sort of often, but um, I'm actually doing sort of paid solo gigs now, as opposed yeah. to I think when beforehand it was all like sort of open mics and freebies basically. Mm-hmm. So but I'm, up, I'm only doing sort of two or three a year, yeah, maybe four on a good sort of good year because it's um, I don't go out looking for them particularly, but if they yeah. come to me and, and ask, then I'll um, or, or if I see a uh, comment on Facebook of people asking for solo acts and I'll stick my name down on the list. But it's, um, yeah, it's because it's quite difficult for me because the the band thing is, you know, by the end of the night, you've got the whole pub bouncing and it's a real yeah. sort of party atmosphere and it's a great vibe. I'm never going to get that from my solo act. You know, you're, you're lucky to get a few people singing along by the end of the evening. You're not going to get people dancing to an acoustic guitar and me singing. Yeah. So it's a very different vibe. Um, and it's, I've had some okay gigs and I've had some terrible gigs and I've had ones where it's been me and a barmaid at one point, you know, sort of. But um, yeah, I'm enjoying it, plugging along and it's uh, going going well. Um, awesome. But the band takes up the majority of my time now. Yeah, I, uh, I, can I also imagine. had a, I was going to say, well, with, yeah, with the scar, with the Cardinals, so um, you know, we we mentioned just before we started recording, you're in that with Nick Ware, who's also in Straight yeah. Eight, um, who he has yeah. uh, been a previous guest on the show as well, and we're going to get the the two of you on together. But Nick was telling me about how the difference between like Straight Eight and the Cardinals is Straight Eight will get maybe seven or eight gigs throughout the summer in festival yeah. season. Cardinals, he said, you're like booked. You're booked up till 2025 by this point. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, how many how many gigs are you playing a year at, as the Cardinals? Well, we do because we don't want to. We, we don't want to kill it. We, we if, we, if we did too many, it becomes yeah. a bit of a job, and it yeah. takes fun out of it. You know, we've all got day jobs. We're not giving up. Our, you know, we, we can't make a living on it. But um, we try and do two a month. That, that's with our sort of philosophy. And we've got we're, we're we're fully booked to the end of the year, and I think we've got 26 gigs this year booked. Nice. And we've got three booked for next year already. I mean, I had someone email me literally for email me this week and say, "When's your next free Saturday?" And I'd say February twenty twenty five. Nice. Which, which is, it's, it's quite a nice feeling, but it's also you know, you've got all these bookings, and then someone comes along with a real plum sort of festival booking or something, and you've got to turn it down because of those other commitments. So yes, it's a it's a blessing and a curse, but yeah, it's um it's going great guns. So, um. I sort of squeeze the odd solo gig in, in in between, so as and when they crop up. So I've got one next week actually in the uh, White Leaf Cross in Princess Visper doing a solo gig. Cool. That's my first or second one of the year, I think. So yeah. yeah well, and and with the solo stuff because I follow you on TikTok, so you you post your videos on there as well. I mean, yeah. I saw recently you did a, a cover of uh, yeah. Waterloo by ABBA as well. Um, it was cracking tune. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but you know how do <laughs> How do you decide, like, I, I guess, like, how do you find what tunes you're going to play both solo and as the Cardinals as well? Because they're both very, I suppose, different genres that you take on. So, but how how do you, like, pick out, okay, I'm going to do Waterloo or, okay, I'm going to do well, X Scar song? Most of those come from, I mean, the Cardinals ones, 
Now, there's a fairly limited catalog in actual fact yeah. because we're sort of concentrating on like the two tone sort of yeah. scar rather than classic sort of Jamaican scar. You know, two tone was only really around for a couple of years, mm. and it only really consists of half a dozen bands, really. Yeah. So, in actual fact, the and you, I mean, and it's you tend to find you go and see a scar band and there'll be 10, 15 songs that every scar band you, you ever see will yeah. play. So, they kind of pick themselves a little bit. We're getting to a point now where we've kind of done all the really well known a side ones if you like and we're starting to sort of play around with some more interesting sort of slightly more off piste sort of ones which the scar fans in the audience will know but the yeah. public probably would never have heard before with my solo stuff it's either um things i sort of hear and go i'll, I'll, I'll have a go at that I, i'm still doing these facebook challenge things mm-hmm. each week so the waterloo one for example came out the fact that last week's challenge was eurovision songs okay yeah and so what's good about that challenge thing is it does make me go and look at songs. I, would, I mean, I would, would never even thought about Waterloo in a million years. Yeah. But in actual fact, it works quite well on acoustic guitar and it sounds yeah. sort, of, sort of pretty good. So most of my sort of, the variety tends to come out of the sort of fact I'm being forced out of my comfort zone all the time with these challenges to try and get new songs. And, I, and it's difficult because I've done, I've submitted, I don't know, probably 300 songs in those things mm. now. But coming up with new ones all the time is actually quite, it's getting quite sort of tricky yeah but i like that because it it pushes me and it may and i'm and by by saying token i sort of try and mix it and sort of do some live acoustic ones and the sort of the, the more more backing track ones mm-hmm. and because i enjoy doing both and i like this and some of the songs i just simply can't play on a guitar and do yeah. any kind of justice but i know i can sing them i just can't play them so yeah i tend yeah, to go for that is. sort of um, backing tracks for those so yeah, I mean, so it, they kind of get picked through that process at the moment. Yeah. So and what's it been? Week, I was going to say, what's it? What's it been like adapting from being again a sort of a singer songwriter through to being um, the frontman of, especially a ska band where you know, I, I mean, I suppose part of it. Do you find like that when you you know you put your your sunglasses on and you you know you're dressed it you're dressed and ready for it? Does is that like putting on a uniform that makes it easy for you to get in character? Yeah. Def- definitely um, a mask i would say more than a uniform because yeah so when so when you're solo you can kind of hide beho- hide behind your guitar a little bit don't you yeah and you haven't got to uh, you can you have, you're not expected to be particularly animated because mm-hmm. you're playing a guitar but as, obviously as a front man when i haven't got suddenly i've just got a microphone and everyone's looking at me i've got to be a bit more animated so yeah, yeah putting on the suit and putting on the glasses i feel like yeah, it's not me anymore and i can actually sort of relax when we first started doing it, because I mean, I was sort of big into madness, but mm. didn't really know know that many of the other sort of special songs and that apart from the really famous ones. Yeah. So what I tended to do when I when I was first started doing it was I'd kind of adopt a bit of a character for yeah. each song and try and do it in a style. And as we've gone along, and I've got more confidence. I mean, you, you look at our videos of our first few gigs. I'm kind of like hanging on to the microphone for dear life yeah. and not really doing very much. Whereas I'm much more relaxed now, and I'm actually. Because I'm not, I mean, I'm, I mean, you so you know me. I'm not the outgoing, flamboyant type as a rule. Yeah. So it's been quite hard for me to actually make that switch up and actually bounce around in that. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm doing yeah. um some so so according to my uh, uh, my step count, I'm, I'm averaging uh, sixteen thousand steps on a gig at the moment. Wow, nice. So so, so, so that's a, it's a two hour workout for me basically. Yeah. Yeah, well, and and as you say, because I think with Scar in particular, it's like you need to be quite animated. I mean, I I guess it's every genre has its, you know, cliches. Like I'm thinking if you're heavy metal, you're going to end up headbanging and things like that. But, you know, because the thing that strikes me is um, particularly doing the song One Step Beyond, your entire duties for that as a vocalist is to shout One Step Beyond and then to let (laughs) the band take over. So, you know, you're there for five minutes and you've got like, 15 seconds of actual work and then the rest of yeah, it is yeah. all I guess about engaging the crowd and especially yeah. with, as you say with Scar people you know they want to have a dance to it they want to get hyped up so I guess it's you're almost like the facilitator of that yeah that atmosphere it's party music yeah it's it, it's party music and it's dance music uh it's so while it's, I mean, it's kind of dance music for blokes well, I tend yeah. to think of it but yeah. um I think what we find with it is um if the band are enjoying themselves or look yeah. like they're enjoying themselves that kind of feeds onto the crowd and by the same token if the crowd are enjoying themselves we play better because we tend to you, you relax into it and you kind of you get that kind of um back and forth almost yeah. like 
uh, unspoken communication. Yeah. And um, so I think what's also recently, uh, our guitarist, sax and bass are all now on wireless um, connections. Yeah. So they can now, if, if we've got enough space, I mean, a lot of pubs are too small. Mm. So, for example, uh, we did a Bellevue last week and yeah. uh, people were dancing, but they were big, it was being filmed and I think they were a bit shy of the camera. So they all were dancing yeah. behind the camera. So come night back to Cairo and a big solo, our sax player so just goes out into sort of the middle of the floor and does your solo yeah. there. You, again, you, you can, I mean, we did a gig over in Ancient and we had our bass player out in the crowd dancing with the crowd as he was playing. So that, again, yeah. brings the crowd in and creates that kind of party atmosphere. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, it's, that, that's the key to it. And we usually find it's getting better because obviously as we're getting more well-known, we're getting people coming back to see us so they know what to expect. Yeah, but we find normally sort of three quarters through the first set, we start to get the first people kind of getting up and enjoying themselves. And yeah. by second set, and and they've had two or three beers by then. Yeah, so yeah. The, so they relax, and obviously also the better, sort of the bigger bangers are in the second half, as any mm. band would do. So yeah, we, we normally by the time we get to night back to Cairo, the place is bouncing and it doesn't stop after that. Cool. So, yeah. Awesome. It's, um, it's a great feeling just standing there, seeing this, all these people just enjoying themselves you know and yeah. thinking well, we've done this you know yeah cool so, yeah. and just just to end on again i keep these short and sweet so um let's say we catch up again in another four years time where do you where do you hope to be <laughs> that's a good question um i will be playing it by ear i mean i think the band is i mean you're not going to be ever be really famous playing covers, I don't think. Mm. So I think you know, it's for us, it's a, it, it's a, it's will always be a hobby. I don't see us ever becoming anything more serious. Uh, I'd like to think that we will grow a following, which we have been, and it will become more popular, and we'll be, hopefully be able to play bigger venues, which will be nice. But um, as long as I'm still enjoying it, I don't really mind where it goes. I mean, so none of us are spring chickens anymore. I mean, it's mm. it's. It takes me two days to recover from a gig these days because it's bouncing around. And it's, I mean, I mean, you know yourself, but singing is a a a, a must a muscle thing, and it's actually yeah. quite energetic in itself. So to do that kind of singing where it's all quite big in walkers, yeah, two hours is actually quite a workout in itself without all the bouncing around. Yeah. So um, yeah, if if, if I can still do, um, if I'm still healthy enough and young enough. In myself to still do that in four years' time, I'll be happy. I think. Yeah. Well, it sounds. It sounds like you'll probably you you'll probably be you'll probably be in better shape from all the exercise. <laughs> yeah, it's quite possibly. <laughs> Big thank you to Colin Upfield for joining me for this week's catch up, and thanks to Nick Ware as well. You're listening to the Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. Uber à 19h, tu me prends en bas de chez moi. Tu donnes le nom de la boîte, de ces bébés transpirés. Au bar à 22 h toujours pas prêt à danser. Encore un peu trop froid, t'es qu'à ta troisième vodka. Lâche-toi, lâche-toi, oublie tes inhibitions. Les autres s'enlacer Et quand tu m'as invité J'espérais bien t'embrasser Et puis je me suis maquillée Exprès pour t'émoustiller Mais vu ce que t'as consommé Tu risques pas de remarquer Lâche-toi Force pas. Non, franchement, non, non, merci, ça va. Si j'attaque ma libute, ma j'aurai la tête dans le cul. Trop tard le bip. 
Et puis je suis pas venu pour venir bourrer dans la rue Les nez en désurgence gâchent mon teint d'ingénie Tant que le DJ Je suis prête à rentrer Tu pourrais me raccompagner Et c'est là que GG Se met à se déhancher What the... Sauf que moi ton état Il est à ma volupté That was your Rancher a PA by Fabulous Parfait. You're listening to The Arch on 106.6 FM with Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain, and it's time for us to join Twangling Jack Ford over in the Oak Shed for this week's album review. Cat Stevens, the very best of Cat Stevens. I enjoyed Cat Stevens' 2023 Glastonbury Sunday Legends set much more than I expected. I have always greatly admired his songwriting, but I was never a fan of the stripped-down folky singer-songwriter sitting cross-legged on the floor thing. But he does have a voice that is absolutely suited to sparse productions. Big but not booming. Slightly rough but not gruff. Distinctive but not so much so as to become tiresome. A Cat Stevens track could sound complete with just a voice and guitar, and he was always tuneful, even when he had moved away from the big melodies in favour of memorable and meaningful lyrics. He rarely resorts to simple strum patterns, but uses complex rhythms which match well with the simple percussion. I have been a bit put off by his more serious attitude since he returned to music as Yusef, or Yusef Cat Stevens. I once heard him in an interview saying that should he ever start playing again, maybe it would only be on the piano, as the guitar was a bit too unbecoming. But watching Glastonbury from the comfort of my Wickham terraced house, I found the whole set to be very uplifting, and he seemed to be enjoying playing the guitar. He played standing up, though his footwear looked very comfortable. He had a big band and a backdrop of memories. He played the great 70s songs like Wild World and the hippie anthems that contributed to my wokeness, like Peace Train and Let the Children Play. He played songs I have never much liked, like Morning Has Broken and Moonshadow, and Father and Son, which I find too sad to listen to, both as a father and a son. And he played songs I have forgotten, like Remember the Days of the Old School Yard. But there was one song I hoped to hear but expected not to. One of my favourite songs from the 60s, Matthew and Son. Matthew and Son is the opposite of the 70s subtle sparseness. 
It is loud and brash with an irresistible melody and a unique lyric. As a child, I always imagined Matthew and Son to be like Department S, staffed by Emma Peels and John Steeds, or those characters that inspired Austin Powers. Listen to it now, it sounds more like a sweatshop. And it must not be forgotten that the man named Cat started it all with a dog lover's anthem. I love my dog as much as I love you. Cat Stevens, the very best of. Big thank you to Twangley Jack Ford for this week's album review. Thank you to Nick Ware and Colin Upfield for catching up with me. Thank you to everyone whose music I've shared. As always, you can find us on Facebook if you search for The Art Show on Wickham Sound. You should be able to find us. And we are repeating on Wickham Sound on Monday nights. We're on the Wickham Sound listen again, iTunes, Spotify, and wherever else you get your podcasts. Please do leave us a short review on your podcast platform of choice. You can also find us on Facebook if you search for The Art Show on Wickham Sound. You should be able to find us. And you can email me here at the studio on dane.cobain at wickhamsound.org.uk. That's D-A-N-E dot c-o-b-a-i-n at wickhamsound.org.uk so i'm gonna leave you with one last tune this is one by myself this is a song called running i'll catch you next week i run because i like the buzz it gives to me I run because I'm haunted by my memories I run because I'm not the man I used to be I run because like nothing else it sets me free I run because it's cold outside and I'm warming up I run because it stops my lungs from giving up I run because I run because and that's enough Gotta put one foot in front of the other I'm dying inside and I'll never recover There's something in my shoe and there's something in my eye There's something in my brain trying to keep me alive And I'm running, 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 running Running away from that which brings me down And I'm running, running Running, running, running away from that which brings me around. I run because I like to cause myself pain. I run because like others I am insane I run because my spirit is a freight train